So let's look at clinically relevant drug interactions. There are two drug interactions with lamotrigine that must be managed carefully when you add it to divalprex and when it's used with carbamazepine. Many clinicians understand these issues, but I'll review them here in a moment. There's one other interaction that doesn't require management, but it gets inaccurate press coverage, a lot of it, so I'll review that as well, and that's oral contraceptives. Starting then with Divalproex, there are two ways this works. If you're adding Lamotrigine to Divalproex, and if you're adding Divalproex to Lamotrigine, let's take the latter one first because it's easy. When you add Divalproex to Lamotrigine, for example, you've controlled depression side symptoms, but there are manic side symptoms that require coverage, or the patient needs anti-manic prophylaxis, and you want both covered, Lamotrigine alone won't do that. So you're going to add Divalproex. Because of the drug interaction whereby Divalproex doubles Lamotrigine levels, this one's simple. When you add the Divalproex, cut the Lamotrigine dose in half. Do it right as you begin Divalproex, because that interaction is very fast, When you get to 250 milligrams on Divalproex, you're 50% of the way there to the drug interaction. And when you increase to 500 milligrams, you're all the way there. And it happens within a day or two. So you can just cut the Lamotrigine in half as you add the Divalproex. The other way around is tricky. The patient's already on Divalproex and you're adding Lamotrigine. Well, now the Lamotrigine that you add is doubled right from the very beginning. So you have to cut the Lamotrigine dose down, and you would really want to start at half of the usual titration. Well, fine, you can just do that. Ironically, the manufacturer is not allowed by the FDA, as I understand it, to instruct you to cut the pill in half. So instead of telling you to start with half of a 25-milligram pill, which is the smallest that's generally used as a starting point, even though there is a 5-milligram pill available, Instead of having you cut that in half and start with half a pill for two weeks and then one whole pill for two weeks, they have you do this every other day thing. There's no point in doing that. Just cut the pill in half, start with 12.5 milligrams per day, add it to your Divalproex and do that for two weeks and then go to one pill, 25 milligrams for two weeks. In other words, just cut all of the doses in half when you're adding Lamotrigine to Divalproex. If you want to be extremely cautious and I think there's reason to think like this. Remember, you're trying to prevent benign rashes as well as the big dangerous Stevens-Johnson syndrome rash. To be really cautious, you could just start with the 5 milligram pediatric dose and go up by one pill every four days. That's slightly slower. It's much smoother. It starts out at a much lower dose. So if I have any concerns at all when I'm adding Lamotrigine to Devil products, I'll do it in that way. Next drug interaction, Lamotrigine and carbamazepine. Well, this is pretty simple. If carbamazepine is in place already, then you have the enzyme induction from carbamazepine in place already. So lamotrigine will come in at half of its usual strength. You could actually start at twice its usual strength. But why take that risk? You're going to gain maybe two weeks. So I would just start it in my usual fashion and relax even a little bit more about the potential for inducing a ration when I add my lamotrigine. Now, how about the other way around? The patient's already on lamotrigine. You're adding carbamazepine, again, because you need anti-manic potential symptoms now or for prophylaxis. Well, now you have to anticipate that lamotrigine levels will fall. On the other hand, you're adding a brand new mood stabilizer. So in general, I wouldn't worry about my lamotrigine level. I just know that it's going to fall. And if the patient does really well on carbamazepine, I might later try to taper off the lamotrigine entirely. Otherwise, I can leave it at its now theoretically lower blood level until, uh uh-oh, now the patient is developing depression symptoms. In that circumstance, then I just say, oh, you know, we need to turn up your Lamotrigine to get back to where we were. When the patient stops carbamazepine, Lamotrigine then is going to go up. So if you're stopping carbamazepine in a patient who's already on Lamotrigine, be prepared for a Lamotrigine increase and manage accordingly. Now, the third drug interaction doesn't really require management, but it gets a lot of noise. So let's take a look at this. That's lamotrigine and oral contraceptives. Now, it is true that oral contraceptives lower lamotrigine about 50%. So if a woman goes on an oral contraceptive and becomes depressed, that could be from the contraceptive. So she's on lamotrigine and she goes on an oral contraceptive and then she gets depressed. That could be the contraceptive that did that. You might have to 
turn the dose of the lamotrigine up in order to contend with that. But the other interaction in the other direction is plausibly more concerning, and that is a woman should not stop her oral contraceptive while she's titrating up on lamotrigine because the stopping of the oral contraceptive will boost the lamotrigine levels right when you are turning them up. So you wouldn't want to have her stop her oral contraceptive right as she's going up on lamotrigine. So that is a plausibly clinically relevant drug interaction here. And then lastly, what about the alarming possibility that lamotrigine could interfere with an oral contraceptive and lower its efficacy, allowing conception to occur? This is stated outright as a risk on WebMD. Quote, if you're taking an oral contraceptive, it may not work as well to prevent pregnancy. Close quote. I think that's very unfortunate because it certainly is alarming. The references cited by WebMD all refer to one reference in which there is a reduction in lamotrigine when oral contraceptive is added. There is only one reference that speaks to the issue of potential contraceptive failure. There's only a single reference on the subject that I've been able to find. And that reference concludes, quote, a modest decrease in the plasma concentration of levonorgestrel was observed, but there was no corresponding hormonal evidence of ovulation, close quote. So could that modest decrease leave a woman at risk of conception? Well, you'd think that in nearly two decades of Lamotrigine use, reversal of contraception would have come up in at least one case report, and there are no such case reports, at least in my search of PubMed, using search term Lamotrigine or contraceptive pregnancy. So as far as I can tell, there is no such risk in this direction. So to review, in terms of clinically relevant drug interactions, with Divalproex, be careful. You have to manage lamotrigine levels in both directions, depending on which agent is being added to which. With carbamazepine, less concerning generally, but don't forget the interaction, particularly when carbamazepine is being stopped or if the patient develops depression after you add carbamazepine, could be because their lamotrigine level went down. And thirdly, on oral contraceptives, Lamotrigine's interaction is clinically insignificant, except for misconceptions amongst pharmacists, I think, in my experience. 